So when we talk about bee health, we talk about a couple of things. One would be to diagnose and deal with pests in the hive. The other is bee nutrition and how that impacts bee health. And I'm not, today I'm not going to talk about how you um, manage things like American fowl brood or varroa mites or small hive beetle or anything like that. That's, uh, those are wider topics, bigger topics, take more time to explain. I'm just going to talk about the, just the principles of bee health. <music> Hi, my name is John Gates. I worked for 26 years for the Ministry of Agriculture in uh, British Columbia, Canada, and then retired and started up my own beekeeping business, uh, bee breeding pollination business. Uh, this past fall, I just sold that business and now I'm just having fun with a few hives of bees. <laughs> Today, I'd like to talk about bee health and the necessity of keeping your bees healthy if you're going to be a successful beekeeper. We know the bees have existed for millennia and they're very good at keeping themselves healthy in the wild, but there are diseases and pests that bees can suffer from and, and even in the wild they suffer from them. In a beehive, it's a bit of a, uh, an unnatural environment for the bees and because we're manipulating the bees, even if we don't do it very much, it is an unnatural stress on the bees. And as beekeepers, I think we have a responsibility to look after our bees and, and keep them healthy rather than just relying on the bees to keep themselves healthy. The bees have uh, um, great abilities to uh, fight off diseases and pests, um, whether it's um, physiological abilities or whether it's behavioral abilities. But there are times when they can be overwhelmed with incoming pests and, and diseases, and that's when we have to know what to do about it. So if you're going to be a successful beekeeper, you really must learn to, be, to diagnose problems in the hive and to deal with them. Um, I'm not a believer in just leaving your bees alone, having them in the hives and leaving them alone, because there are times when they need help. And even if you're not concerned, I hope you are, but even if you're not concerned about your bees suffering or dying off, some people say, well, that's nature. But the other thing you must think about is that if your bees are suffering, quite often that spreads to other beehives, whether they're feral beehives in colonies or whether they're other beekeepers' bees. So I think you have a responsibility to, to maintain bee health. So what can you do as a beekeeper to uh, maintain healthy bees? Well, first of all, you should do a lot of reading. There's a lot of information out there. You can get it off government websites. You can read textbooks. You can go to bee club meetings and get pamphlets. There's lots of information out there. And uh, the other thing I really recommend new beekeepers is to seek out these groups of beekeepers that have meetings. And all around the world there are bee clubs where beekeepers come together perhaps once a month, once every two months, and they discuss beekeeping topics. They'll show videos and they'll just chat amongst themselves about, about their hives, what's happening in their hives. And uh, so a, a great source of information and very good camaraderie as well. So yeah, by, by talking to people, by reading, you can gain a lot of insight and information about bee diseases. But I think really it's, it's essential to go into a beehive with an accomplished beekeeper, whether it's a commercial beekeeper, a very good beekeeper that just has a few hives, and open the hive, get your hands in that hive, pull some frames out with the beekeeper, because a beekeeper will show you things that you won't understand from reading books. And also, especially as a first time beekeeper, the first time you open your hive on your own, you will just see a mass of insects in there crawling all over each other, all over the insides of the hive, and you'll be bewildered about what's going on in there. It's just, it's overwhelming. The, the, the smell you get, the movement, and um, sometimes, of course, you're a little bit afraid of what's going on in there. You've got all these stinging insects. So it's really hard to translate what you've learned from a book into what's going on in a hive to begin with. So that's when it's really good to be with an accomplished beekeeper 
they'll point out these things to you. They'll, they'll, they'll show you the bees cleaning the cells. They'll show you the bees grooming each other. If there's a disease, they'll show you the symptoms of the disease. And then it'll make sense. But it usually doesn't make sense when you read about it and open a beehive for the first time. So yeah, my recommendation is to do a lot of reading and then go out with a good beekeeper and more than once. Um, beekeepers are quite often very proud of what they do and they're very happy to bring a beginner into the fold, you know. So there's no lack of people out there that'll, that'll show you what to do. And, and uh, so take advantage of that. It's a, it's a, a real opportunity. Now, the other thing I want to talk about as far as bee health goes is nutrition, because unless your bees are well fed, they're not going to be healthy. And we know that a lot of diseases are um, sort of stimulated or come on when the bees are poorly fed. Uh, there's a stress on the bees and things like Nosema disease is a stress related disease. If the bees are poorly fed, they don't have enough food, they don't have enough of the right kind of food, they will come down with certain diseases. So nutrition is very important. You always want to make sure that uh, the hives have three or four frames of honey in the hive at all times because then you know that they're not going to run out of, of honey. Uh, pollen is something needed as well. So what you can do as a beekeeper, of course, is just make sure you're not taking more away from them than you should. But there are also times of the year when um, the bee populations are growing very rapidly. They're consuming a lot of food to feed themselves and they're young. Then all of a sudden there's no food coming into the hive. There's a dearth period. Plants are not producing nectar. They're not producing pollen. And there are times right in the middle of the beekeeping season when your bees can starve because there's nothing coming in, there's a huge population of bees, a huge population of brood, and uh, although you couldn't imagine bees starving in the middle of a, a summer or a nice um, warm period when they can get out and fly, they, they can starve. So just make sure you're watching their stores and they've got at least three or four good frames of honey in there at all times. Now when we're dealing with northern beekeeping, uh, we're dealing with something totally different than uh, tropical type beekeeping. Uh, and with northern beekeeping, there are periods of the year when the bees are confined to their hives. They can't get out. It's too cold. And even if they do go out, there's nothing for them. There's, there are no flowers blooming. So um, in the more severe cases, the bees may be confined to their hives up to six months with a, a few little flights out to defecate. But other than that, they're not getting any food. There's no nutrition. So the bees need enough stored food in their hives. Uh, where I keep bees, we like to make sure there's at least 50 pounds of stores in the hives for the beginning of winter. And then we're pretty sure they're not going to starve over winter. So to, to ensure that the bees have that much food, there's a couple of things you can do. You can save back honey from the season when the honey's coming in. If you just have a few hives, you can take nice frames of honey out of the hive and put them in a household freezer if you have a household freezer. The honey will stay in perfect shape in a freezer and then before you put it in the hive you can pull it out, let it warm up a bit and then put it in the hive and you can do that in the fall to make sure that there's at least 50 or 60 pounds of honey in there. And that is equivalent to about one standard deep box of honey. So you can do that and a lot of people will prefer to do that if they've just got a small number of hives. The other thing you can do is you can feed a sugar syrup solution and you can either feed cane sugar, white sugar, beet sugar, the, the white processed table sugar you see on, on the store shelves and that you use yourselves sometimes, or high fructose corn syrup is another decent feed for bees. And I know a lot of people in, <laughs> don't like the idea of feeding bees sugar, but, and we know that it's not particularly good for us, especially if we eat a lot of sugar. But we have to remember that bees are sugar-eating insects. That's a big part of their feed. Honey is mostly sugar. And it does contain sucrose, which is what the white sugar is. It also contains glucose and fructose and other minor sugars and minerals and things like that. So honey is a more rounded food, but bees are sugar eaters and they do invert the sucrose that you feed them into glucose and fructose. So they do change it. And it is a, a decent food for bees, and it's a better alternative than letting them starve or letting them come down with diseases or not thrive because they don't have enough feed. 
So even though you may not like the idea of consuming sugar yourselves, remember they're sugar eaters and uh, you want to keep them alive. The other thing is pollen. Now in most cases, as a, a small time beekeeper, you probably where you keep your bees, there'll be a, a wide enough diversity of pollen that it'll keep your bees healthy. Bees require more than one type of pollen because they don't get all their nutrition from one pollen. So, But in most situations, the bees are picking up pollen from little inconspicuous flowers that we don't even notice in lawns, in the bush, and then there's the trees and, and, and so many other things. One of the really interesting things about beekeeping is sitting in front of a hive and watching them bring in the different colored pollens on their legs and then trying to trace that back to where they're working to see what they're actually bringing in. So pollen is usually not a big problem for, for um, small time beekeepers, but if you're a commercial beekeeper or if you happen to be a small time beekeeper living in amongst hundreds of acres of one type of crop, then pollen could be an issue because the bees are just going to be getting one type of pollen. And in that case, you can feed pollen supplements to help with their nutrition. You can purchase pollen, but if you do, make sure it's been irradiated because pollen can bring diseases with it if you're buying it from people with diseased hives. And that reminds me to tell you about purchasing honey for feeding bees. It's something I never recommend because also there are uh, pathogens in honey from diseased hives that you'll then transfer to your bees. And um, certainly never buy honey from a store shelf to feed your bees because you have no idea where that's coming from. If you have a very good beekeeping friend, you know their hives are clean, then you'd be more comfortable buying honey from them to feed to your bees. But uh, generally I don't recommend buying honey for feeding your bees. And even if you do buy honey to feed your bees, it's a little difficult to feed. There's, there's, a, there's more information that I'm gonna give you today on how, do, how you feed honey. So sugar syrup, syrup is uh, generally easy to deal with, easier to deal with. So we wanna keep our bees healthy. If our bees are healthy, we feel good because we've got a thriving colony that's doing everything it should. It's very fascinating. If they're unhealthy, of course, it's just a situation that this cause, will cause you despair, I think, and it causes me despair when I look at an unhealthy colony. But also, if you're hoping to get some honey from a hive or hoping to make some money by keeping bees, then of course you've definitely got to keep your bees healthy so the hive will thrive and they can bring in honey crops, they can pollinate for you, they can produce pollen and all these sorts of things. So it's necessary to keep them healthy. It's necessary to keep them well fed. I always say that if you look after your bees, your bees will look after you. I guess that's it.